Here we have an iPhone 7 Plus that came in for no power. We attempted to charge the phone and the charging station, the screen went black. Black is a very good indication that we may have a short circuit on the board. We already disassembled the motherboard right here. And we have the customer's ticket number on the phone. And let's take a look and see what's going on. Before we do anything, I'm gonna apply power manually by using this power meter. We have a cable for 7 Plus. So we're gonna attach the charging connector and the battery connector. And we're gonna attempt to supply power via this tool here. And for those of you who do not know, we have this in our e-commerce site. Every time I use a tool, I mention that we have it on our site. So you know, because we got questions all the time. What is that tool that you are using? So right now, I have the meter connected. We did not power on the phone yet. I cannot power on the phone from here unless we do it manually. But we can press this button here to power the phone on. And then we're going to monitor to see if we have any amperage draw. Right now, we see zero. 0 0.001, 0 0.002, which means zero. The meter did not shut off like what happened when we tried to charge the phone via cable. Now we are applying power directly onto the board. So if you press the button, try to power the board on, I see amperage draw went straight up to five or 0 0.5. As soon as we power the board on, we see that amp draw went up to 0 0.5 immediately. And this tool is powered by this station via this cable and we see amperage being drawn by the station around 0 0.6. And it's steady at 0 0.6 amps. That's not good. That's not a normal behavior of an iPhone turning on. Let me grab a thermal camera and then just quickly look at the board under a thermal camera to see if there's anything obvious. Most likely we have a short on the board. We do have a heat spot right here. And the CPU does not look like it's on. Yeah, I feel heat right here, a lot of heat. I'm grabbing the board with my fingers and the board is very hot. Look at this. If I remove my finger, look at my finger, it's hot. Okay, the board is hot. All right, so heat is coming from right over here. I just disconnected the cable. Heat is coming from right where we see this I mean, I do see two lines here. I do not know what those two lines are about. No signs of flux, no signs of work being done on the board. And nothing stands out as being burned or blown or faulty. Heat was coming from around this area here. Okay, turn the phone on and look at this. Heat is coming from, whoa, whoa. Okay, see? We want to pinpoint where heat is coming from. And right now heat is coming from, it looks like the short is coming from this audio I see. I mean, heat is coming exactly from this area here, right here. We do see a chip on that chip from the corner here. And heat is being generated from the very corner here. Is it possible that one of the caps is causing that short? Or maybe the chip itself is bad? Right now we do not care about the chip. We can remove it. We do not care about the audio at this point. We care about data recovery. Let's go ahead and measure the cap and see if we have a short. I mean, heat is showing at the very corner of the chip, but we also have a capacitor. So it's very possible that the short is coming from the capacitor and not from the chip. Meter in diode mode. And do we have a short? And we do not. So the problem is likely the chip. We have 0 0.18 voltage drop. 
0 0.68, 0 0.68, 0 0.68, the same here, 0 0.78. Now we have a dead short here. Let me go to Ohm's mode. We have a dead short on this cap. Okay. No problem. The board wanna play games? We can play games too. No problem. I'm not gonna remove the chip just yet because it could be one of those villains around the chip. They want to trick me into taking out the chip, but not yet. Let's take a look at the board diagram here for the 7 plus, and that's the audio I see right here. So this cap should be ground on this end, and it should not be ground on this end. And this end connects with the chip from here, where heat is probably being generated. What else connects with this component? We have this chip here and okay, so right now we're gonna inject voltage on this cap here, right there on the red side of the cap and see what happens. Let's go to our thermal camera. Let's inject voltage at the positive side of the capacitor. Whoa, something else completely far away got hot. Something on the left side. Not the chip, not the audio IC. Even though heat was coming from the audio IC, the short is not coming from the audio IC. And that's why we did not just jump into removing this IC. We have that short here. And the short is coming from the left side. From where? From right over here. So, <laughs> the problem is not the chip. The problem is not the capacitor next to the chip. But the problem is coming from somewhere left of the board, from right over here. We have a lot of components on this side of the board, a lot of capacitors, a lot of components. How can we tell which component is getting hot? The heat spot is coming from right over here. And I suspect that possibly this cap is bad, but I cannot tell just yet. Why don't we use our atomizer, apply some Rosen flux here, and then we can apply voltage and see where flux melts. That would be an awesome idea. And that's the perfect use of an atomizer. We're going to press the button five times to turn this device on. Okay, and I already have some Rosen flux inside from the last time I used it. I do not know if that's enough, but let's see. Now we're going to press and hold the button. And we're going to apply Rosen vertically like this. right we should have enough on the board let's take a look oh yeah we have enough now we're gonna monitor this area and we're gonna apply voltage on the shorted cap and see what gets hot okay ready one two now look at this area here we're gonna focus on this area Right there. You see it? <laughs> you can see it like the sun. Look at this. Wow. The power of using the atomizer. Wow. And if we keep applying voltage here, flux is going to melt some more. And it's very obvious that the problem is right there. That's where the problem is, the bad guy. So let's go ahead and remove this cap, and then we're going to attempt to power the phone on. Hopefully, the phone will power on. We're going to remove this capacitor the old-fashioned way, and some people are going to cringe. If you cringe, it's good for your health. It refreshes the blood in your body.
done. Now let's go back here. We're gonna measure this capacitor to see if we still have a short. Meter and diode mode. And do we still have a short here? Do we still have a short here? No short, 0 0.4 voltage drop. Amazing. We got rid of the short. <laughs> we got rid of the short. The short is gone. Like we always say. Now we're gonna plug the power and battery cable, the charging connector and the battery cable on here. And let's see. Initially, we would see a number fluctuate between 0 to 0 0.1 when the phone is not on. Now it's at 0, stable. Now if we press to turn the phone on, normal. Look at this, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. It will go up, 2 over 1 amp. We're going to have to wait. It should go over 1 amp and then settle back down. But right now it's stuck at 0 0.2. Maybe we have more issues with the board. We have more issues with the board. We're going to have to troubleshoot and see what's going on. Maybe our audio IC is also bad because of the short. Because we did see initially a heat spot on the edge of the audio IC. Maybe the short that we just released affected the audio IC. Maybe. Right now, the board is still hot. Let's take a look at the board. And just when you need the thermal camera, the battery is dead. I'll be back in a few minutes. I need to charge the battery. All right, so let's go to our thermal camera again. I want to monitor if the audio IC will heat up like when we started. If yes, then most likely our audio IC is hit. And we also need to remove it. Let me plug power. One, two, and three. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We still have a problem on the audio IC port on the lower right. So we have two issues. We have an issue with the short that we just cleared by removing the capacitor. And we also have an issue with the audio IC. Nothing is easy in life. You can't just have one problem. You have to have two. Let's go ahead and remove the audio IC. Okay, done. Let me just readjust the scalp right here. And let's just make sure solder balls are not touching. Alright, so we removed the audio IC and you see a lot of ripped pads, but those are really not ripped pads because those pads do not connect to anything. There are no connects and usually they are very weak. They serve no purpose. And if you look at the board diagram here, you can tell. All those are no connects as well as this and this and the ones on the bottom and some on the left. Just as you see here. All right, let's go ahead and plug power. The charging cable connected, and right now I'm using the regular charging cable, and we see a 0 0.6 amp charge on the station. Stuck at 0 0.6, that's not good. Let me inspect the board under a thermal camera. 
this board looks like it doesn't want to get fixed. We no longer see heat on the audio IC, so we got rid of that. But we do see heat on the PMIC chip. And possibly some heat from the back CPU area. If the motherboard keeps misbehaving like this, then we're just gonna feed it to the dogs. Oh. Just desoldered the shield by applying heat onto it. I do not see anything obvious here. The CPU is a bit hot. But nothing stands out as being faulty. Right now, the only thing I can see wrong with this board at this point is possibly the PMIC chip. I think I'm going to call it off on this board for now. Maybe I'll pay it another visit tomorrow, but I have a lot of other things that I need to get done. And I just cannot afford to keep spending all the time on one specific board. I do not know where else to look. I did not do any measurements. I did not look at any diode readings, but based on my experience working on those boards and based on what I can see on the thermal camera, we removed the short that was caused by a capacitor and that capacitor was linked directly to the PMIC chip that's on the board now. We do not know if the PMIC chip is still good or not. We had a big heat spot on the audio IC, we removed and that heat spot is gone. We may have a PMIC issue, we may have a uh, possibly CPU issue, I don't know. I'm going to have to spend more time on this board. That's it, we're going to call it off for now. I'll update you if I have any future news for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video.